uh, today's webinar around um, SharePoint success and measuring portal ROI. I just want to do one more quick sound check for all those who just joined us. If you can hear me okay, uh, feel free to send a quick hi into the chat box uh, just to make sure that everyone's audio is working. And we'll begin in just a minute. All right, thank you everyone for joining this afternoon. I hope everyone's having a good day as we end the week. My name is Yari Negri and I'm Director of Marketing here at Intlock. Uh, what I want to do over the next um, 40 minutes or so is share with you um, some ways that we can help uh, understand if our SharePoint portal is achieving the goals that we've defined, if it's helping our organization, and if employees really find it beneficial, and if not, how we can go maybe uh, improve our portal to make sure that it really is achieving the goals that we want and that it really does have an ROI. This webinar will be recorded, so for anyone who wants to share this content later and so forth, um, we'd be happy to share this with you as well. And I'll start out with a uh, brief introduction. Uh, this webinar will be mostly a, a demonstration. It will also include some Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions, feel free to enter them in the um, chat box um, throughout the demo. And I'll make sure to get to as many questions as we can at the end. Uh, and briefly, a little introduction to Intlock for those of you who are not familiar with us. Uh, we've been around for seven years now. And we're working in the web analytics field with our key goal to help our customers understand how their portal is being used um, to be able to go back and improve the portal. Briefly, I'll go into why portal analytics and, and why analytics for an intranet are so important and how can this really help us understand if our portal is effective and so forth. And here we're going to see some of the many questions that um, analytics and reporting can help us understand about our environment. So for example, we can better understand who's actually using the portal, or maybe more importantly, who's not using the portal. If we know specific groups or specific users are not engaging with our portal, um, it's because they don't know how to use SharePoint and, and our environment, in which case we may, we may go back and provide them with more training. Or perhaps we'll find out from those people that uh, the portal in its current um, phase doesn't help them achieve any of their tasks uh, in day-to-day -day usage. So in that case, we might go back and um, see how we can change the portal or provide them with the different um, products or services that they need um, within the portal. We can also learn a lot about search and about content um, and so forth. And I'll go into more details about all these different um, aspects in the demonstration in just a few moments. Now, the bottom line really is to help us build stronger portals. I, we all spend so much effort, time, budget into this wonderful tool called SharePoint. And I think in many cases, we're not sure if um, all that effort is actually succeeding. Uh, we, we don't really know if everyone is using the portal. We're not sure if they're benefiting from it. And so what I'd like to share with you today is how once we know what our goals are, what we want people to achieve with the portal, we can go back and monitor this environment, see exactly how it's being used, and then once we know how it's being used by our users, we can go back and enhance and improve our portal. And today I want to focus on three main areas that I feel are crucial for an intranet. Uh, and these three areas are search, we'll talk a little bit about um, how people find content and what they're looking for and how we can improve um, their, our search and, and the effectiveness of where the content is located within our portal. We'll talk a little bit about 
individual users and see how we can monitor what users are doing, how we can get more feedback from users as they're browsing the portal in real time. And we'll also talk about content to better understand how we can improve um, our content within the portal, how we can monitor which content is being accessed and used, and so forth. And let's start out with the first category and talk a little bit more about search. And the key questions we have around search is, first of all, what are people searching for? I, I think search gives a lot of great indicators to uh, the health of our portal. Um, if we understand what people or what our users are not able to find, uh, perhaps we can find ways to surface specific content, which many of our employees and users are finding hard to find. We can also take a look at how much time people are spending looking for content. Uh, maybe our, our employees are wasting a lot of time in their day to day within SharePoint because they're not able to find the content they need. Um, and it's really here the idea is how can we monitor and see what people are searching for, surface the content that people are searching for the most, and also add content to specific pages based on what they expect to find within those specific pages. And I'll just jump into the demo to show you a little bit about the, the statistics that we can um, use to better understand and learn about search and what people are searching for. And so I'll just briefly open up a new dashboard for myself and show you the different kind of metrics that we can use for search. And I'll briefly name my report uh, search report. And here I want to better understand exactly which content my users are searching for, what they can't find. Let's go ahead and add a few metrics to this dashboard. And we'll take a look at the um, search phrases category. And as you can see, there are many different reports available within this specific category. And I'll, I want to know what are the specific search phrases people are searching for, to know what content people are spending a lot of time looking for. I also like to know what are my failed search phrases. So for example, what are people um, searching for and yet they still can't find the content that they're looking for. Let's also try to understand which individual SharePoint pages people are spending time searching on. That's a great indication which helps us understand um, what people would expect to find on a certain page and yet it's not there. Uh, in this way we can go back and maybe add the content to an individual page and make sure our users find, uh, are able to locate there the content that they expect. Let me just refresh this so we can see some actual information in my reports. Okay, and we'll just refresh this to see the actual data in my reports. And I'll show you again how we can get a lot of rich information of what people are searching for within the portal uh, and, and what is they are looking for in order for us to really help improve the portal's ROI and the efficiency of our employees. Okay, so back to our dashboard. Here we can see um, the tables again, and there should be some populated data here for us to work with. Okay, there we go. So here I've started out by adding a few different metrics to my dashboard. Uh, the first one on the top right is showing us a list of the actual search phrases people within our organization um, are searching for. And so here, of course, 
what we can do is, for example, take the top 10 search phrases and perhaps add um, links to our the homepage of our portal, um, send people directly to the content that's most popular. In that way, we can um, save a lot of time for our employees. Um, in this case, they won't have to go and search for these actual, uh, this actual content, and they can find it all within our homepage. So a great way to identify which kind of people are searching for. Let's go ahead and add a um, failed search report as well. Now, a failed search can be defined in a few ways. You can define a failed search as any search term that retrieves uh, zero results. So in that case, our users are really in trouble because they are looking for content, and yet our search engine doesn't return any results for them. Um, and this really shows us a, a case where people are wasting a lot of time uh, trying to find that content. In just one moment, you'll be able to see this report. Okay, and we can see it here as well. So for example, I filtered out this report to show us um, the search phrases that return zero results. And so we can go back and really identify these search terms, be able to go back and see if we can improve these search terms and add the content which is relevant. In the report at, on the right-hand side, we can actually see which um, pages people are going to after search. And maybe a little more interesting, I'll also add a search origin report. And this is a great report that helps identify which individual pages people are relying on search the most. This can really help us identify the pages that users might not be finding the right content on. And for pages that people are spending a lot of time um, searching on, we might want to go back and tackle those individually and add specific content that might be relevant for those pages that our users expect to find on those individual pages. Okay, and apologies for the slight delay in the demo this afternoon. Um, the demo gods are less with me than I'd hoped for, but let's just try and refresh this and see if we get this back on track. Sorry about that. Okay, there we go. So here again, what I've added is a report that shows us which actual pages within our SharePoint intranet are uh, being searched on the most. So just as an example, I can see here that the About Us page, um, our users have searched 445 times on this page. And what I want to do is go and further investigate the About Us page to see exactly which search terms people are using on this page that can help me maybe identify or might be a good um, indication as to what people would expect to find on this specific page. And what I'll do, I'll go to the um, portal item here and I'll search for the About Us page. And as you can see, the tool actually identifies the different pages within SharePoint. 
and I'll simply add this page to my dashboard instead of seeing the entire portal. And let's hit OK and we'll refresh this dashboard. And so here what I can see is that all my reports have now been filtered to this specific About Us page. Um, so of course the on-site search origin pages is only the About Us page. And then here I can actually see the individual search phrases that people are searching for on this page. This might help, help me understand or um, help me identify exactly which content my users are expecting to find on the About Us page. And I can go back and change the content on this page or add the relevant content that people are searching for uh, within this specific page. I can also see which pages uh, people are going to after they search on the About Us page. So I might want to take some content from these destination pages and add them to this About Us page. Now I can also generate this report in order to share this information with other folks on my team. And we can actually share this information. Um, so in this case, specifically what people are searching for on the About Us page uh, in a few main ways. I can, of course, export this report to PDF or CSV. I can also add a distribution list to this report where I can add the different business owners who might be interested in this individual dashboard and have the tool automatically send this out to them every day, week, or month, or as often as I'd like. And I can also create a web part um, out of any one of these different dashboards or reports and import that web part into our SharePoint portal so that your business owners, your users, can actually view this content as they browse the portal. So a great way to also share this information, in this case, what are our users um, searching for? The second area that I want to be able to track and be able to um, learn more about is our individual users and our different groups of users within the portal. And I'd like to better understand which uh, departments within our organization are actually using our SharePoint portal. Can we identify departments that are not using it as much? Uh, we can also understand who individually is not using the portal, and then maybe go back and understand why they're not using it, and then again, offer them more training or um, see what they need to, in order to use the portal more. We can improve our governance. So I know many organizations spend a lot of time rolling out detailed governance plans of who can access what and, and so forth, but do we really have a good way of seeing um, that those government plans are in place, that we're able to monitor those plans um, and take actions if we see that um, people aren't really going in line with those different plans? And finally, I also want to see how we can actually ask users, as they browse the portal, the questions we want answered. So in this case, for example, ask them exactly what they need to improve the portal, exactly what they um, like or what they benefit from the portal, and so forth. And so here we'll take a look at a another dashboard, this one instead of search specifically about users and exactly who's accessing the portal, which groups, and so forth. And here if we take a look and start out at the bottom um, left hand of the dashboard, we can actually see um, the total number of, of activity or number of page views um, filtered by different Active Directory um, user groups, or in this case, user attributes. And in this case, I filtered my report by um, different departments within our organization. And the idea here is to really identify the individual um, groups of users who are not as active uh, within the portal. And so in this case, I can see that my um, R&D, sales, and QA teams are very, very active within the portal. If I scroll down a little, I can see, for example, that um, there are other groups, like my support team or my operators, that are much less active 
within our SharePoint intranet. This is a great indicator to go back to those groups and really see why that is and better understand if there's any content or any services that we can add to the portal that those groups might find vital and in that way improve their um, experience and really help them be more efficient. If we take a look at the top left report in this dashboard, I can actually see a list of individual users browsing our portal. Uh, in this demo environment, you can see that some of our users are anonymous, and I can see their IP address. Uh, and at the same time, you can see that some of the users are actually authenticated, um, and we can see their information, um, their username through Active Directory. I can also drill down on any specific user or group to get more information about that user. So here, for example, if I want to know what Peter's 90 page views have been, I can simply open up an instant dashboard to learn more information about Peter in this case. Okay, and let's give this just one more moment to see if this dashboard will load for us. There we go. So here we can see a specific individual dashboard for Peter, and we can see exact, exactly which content um, Peter has viewed. Uh, we can also see things like um, what days he, he visited the portal and so forth. So a great way to really drill down to the specific individual user level, uh, and we can do the same thing for uh, in specific groups. Now, this is also a great way to uh, monitor our governance. Here in this case, we can see exactly which users accessed a, an, a specific part of the portal. And if you have many different business owners, each one, for example, responsible for a different area within the portal, we can make sure that each business owner is seeing the statistics that he or she is interested in. So for example, if I'm responsible for a specific site collection, I can actually filter this report only for a specific site collection owner, for example. Let me show you how I do that. I'll briefly edit this report. And what I'm going to do is actually change the area of the portal that this report is for. So it's really relevant only for the specific um, site collection owner. And in this case, instead of taking my entire site, I'll remove that, and I'll take just this XTech site collection, and I'll hit OK, and again select, let's take the last month. I'll just refresh this dashboard, and now this dashboard will be um, solely showing me data for this specific site collection that I chose. And here you can see in this site collection, um, all of our users um, who visited this site collection. And again, this is a great way for me to be able to track governance and see exactly who has accessed um, my specific site collection. And then down here at the bottom right, I can not only see which users have accessed my site collection, but also see which users are modifying or contributing content to the portal. And this is a great way to see who are um, SharePoint evangelists who um, are really using the portal to a great extent. We can go back and learn from these users exactly how they're using the portal and maybe share that information from the other folks within our organization and make sure that everyone is really getting the most out of our SharePoint portal. And then finally, again, uh, since this is a dashboard for a specific site collection, we can again share this information with that site collection owner in a few great ways. So I can um, create a web part for that site owner um, and have him or her browse the data within SharePoint. Or again, I can create a distribution list, add the two or three um, owners of the site collection, and have them receive all this information about users. And again, help us understand which users are accessing the portal, which might need more training um, for SharePoint. And really help us understand 
how people are using our SharePoint portal. And before I move on to the content, I see one question here um, that's very relevant about users. Uh, and it's saying that in some regions, um, privacy policies or uh, laws in, in specific countries don't allow to see what individual employees are doing or show usernames. And so for that case, we, we have a tool um, which actually um, conceals personal information like usernames so that this tool can also be used in, in areas like the um, European Union, uh, specifically Central Europe, like uh, Germany and Switzerland, that in some cases uh, we can't actually show the individual usernames. Uh, the, the third area that we want to be able to um, track and monitor the usage of within our portal is, of course, content. And some of the main questions here is what content is accessed most? Um, what's our top content? What do people um, find the most valuable? And more than that, uh, which content is not being used at all? Um, so in this case, if we find specific documents which haven't been accessed in the past 12 months, can we go ahead and remove that content? If there are entire site collections or team sites, uh, let's say once a, a project um, has been concluded, um, if that team site hasn't been accessed for a certain number of um, months, perhaps we don't need that content anymore in our portal, and we can save um, space within our environment, and so forth. And so we'll go ahead and talk a little more about um, content. And we'll go ahead and create another dashboard and show you some of the many reports that we can use to better learn about content and improve our portal through what we can learn about content. And here for my business owners, I'd like to add a um, page use chart so they can see some trends over time of how people are accessing their um, individual site collections, for example. And I also want them to see exactly which content within that site collection is most popular. Now, my users also want to be able to um, view these different dashboards and reports by specific SharePoint types. So, for example, if we want to see only what's the most popular documents within a specific site collection, let's go ahead and add that as well to our dashboard. So, we'll add the pages by types reports. Okay, and then here we can see two charts and two tables. Uh, the chart on the left is showing us a trend over time of page views. And of course, we can completely customize these charts as we'd like. So in this case, I want to see these charts um, by days. This is a great way to show our business owners some trends for, in this example for the past month. Uh, of how people are accessing their specific um, content. And then below the chart, we can actually see a list of the most popular content within this uh, site collection. This is a great way for our users to understand the most popular content. And of course, we can also show which content has zero page views or has not been accessed at all uh, within the past uh, month. Um, and show them those statistics as well. And, and you can also define exactly what um, date range you'd like this information to be shown for. So in this case, I'm showing for the past month, but it can also be for the past year or even for several years. Um, and here we can actually show data for up to the past um, five years. Let's go ahead and customize this chart as well. Um, I'll go ahead and define this as a daily chart, and then here as you can see, I can define exactly which content I'd like to be displayed. Um, so I might want to only show um, documents, and let's take wikis and blogs for this example, and save that. So here, here I'll be able to see a trend over time of how many users are accessing um, documents, wikis, and blogs.
Okay, so in this demo environment, you can see that our users are only accessing documents. And here in this list, I can also filter this to show me only specific content that I'm interested in. So instead of showing us all SharePoint content types, I'll go ahead and select documents. And let's save that. And now as you can see, um, I'm getting a list of only the most popular documents being accessed within our SharePoint portal. I can also drill down on any one of these documents. So if I want to see exactly which users have viewed, um, let's say, this um, level style um, document, I can see here that there are 454. But if for governance purposes or for other reasons, I want to see exactly who viewed this document, I can drill down on this document, similar to the way I drilled down on uh, Peter earlier, to see exactly which users um, and more information specifically for this item within our portal. Now I'll just give a demo another moment to load here. There we go. Okay, so here I have a specific dashboard for this um, level style uh, document. And here I can see a lot of great information about this individual document. I can see exactly where people came from to this document, so what were their previous pages. I can see a trend over time of how many users access this document. And then below I can actually see a user's who accessed the document. I can see how many times each person viewed the document and so forth. So a great way to help me um, govern and, and, and see exactly who's accessed individual content within my portal and so forth. Okay, so as the demo is loading, um, I'll just mention that, that that was a very brief introduction to how we can learn more about the content within the portal and exactly what users are um, accessing and what's our least popular content as well, and that we know which content people find um, less relevant or are not accessing, and perhaps we can um, get rid of and remove from our portal. The um, other area of users and getting more feedback from users around what, they, what it is they're looking for um, will be helped by our tool called Voice of Customer. This is a survey tool and allows us to add um, non-intrusive uh, pop-up surveys in, into our portal to be able to ask our users the questions we want answered as they browse the portal. And let me preview a few of these. So here at the bottom right, you have to see what these um, surveys look like within SharePoint. We can define these surveys as open text-based answers or multiple choice answers, for example. And this really is a great tool for us to be able to survey our users as they browse the portal. And let's just take this final survey as an example. So here the question that we're asking users is um, if they have any tips or if there are any features that they would want us to add to their portal to help it be more effective. I'll also jump into our um, SharePoint demo site. So this is a, a SharePoint 2010 site. And as I scroll up and down, you can actually see at the bottom right of the screen what one of these surveys will look like within our SharePoint portal. So again, very small and non-intrusive, and it helps us get all the feedback we need from our users um, in real time. So as they browse the page, we can get them to tell us um, what they find um, not so effective on this page or what they want to add to the portal to make it more effective. And I'll briefly show you just how easy it is for our business owners to create their own surveys here.
All I need to do as a user, and again, there's no need for any technical or IT background here, is simply define the question that I want to appear within the portal. And then I'll define if it's going to be an open text-based answer or multiple choice. I'll define which page or pages I want this survey to appear on. And of course, I can define for different pages uh, different surveys. And I can also define exactly which users I want to receive this survey. So I can, for example, only survey a specific um, Active Directory um, user group. So let's say only people from um, our sales team. We might want to get information from them. And in that way, collect all the information about how they might find the portal more effective and so forth. So that was a brief introduction to um, how we can learn more about our SharePoint deployments with portal analytics, um, how we can survey our users as they browse the portal. I see there are a few questions in the um, chat box, and if you have any more questions, uh, please feel free to enter them now. Uh, and, and before I get into questions, um, I'd be happy to mention that for anyone who's evaluating this product at the moment, that you can feel free to sign up for um, our free trial or for a personal demo for your team, where we'd be happy to showcase this, this um, tool and also um, discuss all of your requirements around um, portal reporting and improving the SharePoint um, site. So you can feel free to do that. And you can also contact us via email. And again, if you have any additional questions, or would like to um, schedule a demonstration for your team as well. OK, so the first question is asking, um, I understand with the Enterprise Edition of Cardilog, we can use this tool for more than one SharePoint site. In that scenario, is it possible? Um, to show certain sites to certain web content editors uh, within our environment. Okay, so let me start out with that question. And the answer is yes. Um, and let me briefly also go back into the demo and show you exactly how this is done. If I open a report, just as an example, I'll go ahead and edit it. There are a few different preferences that we have for each dashboard. So the first is the date range, where I can filter this report by um, exactly what dates I want to report on. And to answer this question, I'll use the portal item area. And so here, as you can see, I can select any part of our SharePoint um, portal. Uh, here, we can see the SharePoint tree structure hierarchy. And so you can create an individual dashboard for each um, site, for each subsite, um, and we can even drill down to a specific page, um, document, or any other list or list item uh, in order to um, view information for that specific part of the portal. So again, I can select this um, site collection, um, hit OK, and then once I generate my report, I can add to the distribution list only the owners of that specific site collection. And that way, have this dashboard be sent to the site owner of this X Tech site collection, and then just duplicate this dashboard for the other sites. So yes, we can show specific dashboards for different areas um, of the portal. And more than that, if you're using SharePoint for a few environments, or if you're using, um, let's say, both Moss and SharePoint 2010, we can definitely um, show content for each environment on its own or aggregated. Um, and if you're using SharePoint for um, your intranet, extranet, and public-facing website, we can monitor all those environments through a single um, deployment of Cardiolog. And again, provide the different dashboards to different users. So obviously, our markers will want the dashboards um, for the website, for example, and maybe human resources and um, 
um, internal communications, we want more dashboards for the intranet. So we can definitely provide different dashboards to different users based on which areas of the portal they're responsible for. And let's take a look at the next question here. The next question is asking, does, it, does Cardilog uh, need fast or does it just work uh, well with SharePoint search? So the idea here is, is that Cardilog can monitor and track um, just about any kind of search that you have deployed uh, for your portal. So whether if that's the SharePoint out-of-the-box search or if it's um, fast search, we can work with both these search engines and provide you with um, the different metrics around search that I showed. So who's searching, um, what search phrases, um, what search phrases are failed and are retrieving zero results and so forth. So we can actually work um, both with fast and with the out-of-the-box search as well as other search engines. The next question says, um, can any of the reports be dynamically displayed in a web part in SharePoint? And so the answer there is yes. Um, and let me go ahead and generate this report. What I can do is actually create a web part for any dashboard or report that um, I've created in Cardiolog. So for all the reports that we have, we can create a web part out of it. And what this will do is create a DWP file. Um, and all you need to do is import that uh, DWP file into your SharePoint portal as a web part. And that um, web part is constantly refreshed with information. So uh, you can define how often to generate a report. Uh, let's say if I define this for once um, every day, then every single day that report will be um, updated. So there's no need to recreate the web part, re-update it into your portal and so forth. We can actually view all the information as a web part within SharePoint and know that the information is constantly refreshed. So we can definitely do that as well. And I see that's the last question for the webinar this afternoon. So if there are any more questions, I'll stay on the line for a few more minutes. And again, if there are um, any more questions uh, in the next few uh, days or so, or if you would like to um, schedule a demonstration for your team, um, you can feel free to contact us and myself directly, and we'd be happy to um, further assist or answer any questions you might have. So for now, I'll thank you all for joining this afternoon, and if there are any questions, feel free um, to um, send them over now, and I'll stay on the line for a couple more minutes.